Kicking off the list at number 10, the Bell Island Boom. Back in 1978, Bell Island, located just northwest of Newfoundland, a loud boom was heard. It was powerful enough to shake houses. This thing caused property damage, right? It's pretty intense. There's a pretty large group of individuals that believe this was some sort of supernatural phenomena of some sorts, of course. On a Sunday night, right in the middle of Jig's dinner, this flash of lightning just shook the land. Darren Bickford, who was just 12 years old at the time, was riding his bike back home to catch his favorite TV show. Pre-Netflix problems, we love those. As I approached the end of our driveway, all the birds stopped chirping. All the dogs stopped barking. It just went so still. And then it was both. It was like a shotgun blast followed by a ball of light. And then followed immediately after the second ball. The ground shook underneath me. It was the biggest noise I've ever heard in my entire life. End quote. So what were these floating balls of lightning? Where did they come from? What many believe it was a super weapon test conducted by either the United States or the Soviet Union. Either way, if you visit Newfoundland, keep your head up. Getting screeched in should probably help either way. In our ninth spot today, we have the Lonely Whale. was first recorded in 1989 by an American military network listening for nuclear submarines. Instead, they captured this audio. It's of a blue whale with a weird high voice, with the main notes at a frequency of 52 hertz, a low bass note to human ears. To compare, most blue whales have a frequency between 10 to 40 hertz, so this whale has a very unique voice. But because of its voice, it can't communicate with the other blue whales. Hence why it's been given the name the world's loneliest whale. Because it's just swimming around trying to make friends, but he can't call to them properly. Like, that broke my heart. Like, listen to this audio again. It literally sounds like this whale is crying out for help. the Challenger Deep Moans. And if you guys are liking this video so far, then make sure you smash that like button because it really helps us out. So at the very bottom of Mariana's Trench, there is a point called the Challenger Deep, which is the deepest point known on Earth. Since it is so deep, it's been pretty hard to explore, so we really don't know what's down there. But in March of 2016, a recording picked up some very creepy low moans coming from down there. Basically, to even get this recording was a struggle. The microphone was encased in titanium and was slowly lowered down so it wouldn't be crushed by the pressure. It took them 23 days to get the microphone to the deepest point down there. Then that's finally when they picked up this. Again, the sound of a massive sea creature that we haven't discovered yet. Or at least that's what it sounds like, honestly. In our seventh spot today, we have Julia. On March 1st, 1999, a weird sound was recorded by the National Oceanic and Atmosphere Administration. The sound lasted for about 15 seconds and sounds like someone whining or cooing. Now, I don't know why they named it Julia. Like when I first listened to the clip, I was trying to hear someone say like, Julia, but I'm stupid. That's just the name that they gave to the sound. Could it be any more confusing? Anyways, the sound itself sounds like a sea monster moaning. People were taken aback by the sound because of how loud it was. To this day, researchers don't 100% know for sure what made that noise. But their theory is that it was just an iceberg running into the sea floor. Not as spooky, I know. Let's stick with Sea Monster. In our sixth spot today, we have the Aquatic Choirs. This is unfortunately the only sound that I couldn't find an actual recording of. But scientists in Australia have discovered that many different fish sing together at dawn and dusk, much like how birds do and then they wake you up in the morning and you're really cranky. Anyways. Researchers from Curtin University in Perth started recording the sound that a number of fish make. Most of the sounds were from a single fish repeating the same call over and over again. But when two or more fish of the same kind joined in, 
the sounds would overlap and basically would sound like someone was humming or singing underwater. In fact, they discovered that the black jewelfish made a ba 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 sound. I think it's more like a pa pa pa. There you go. That's that's my impression of the black jewelfish. Either way, hearing that underwater would trip anyone out. Like imagine you're swimming off and you hear that you're like, "Yo, who's there?" It's just a fish playing games, but still. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the train. This noise was given the name the train because it literally sounds like a train chugging by and blowing its whistle underwater. in 1997 by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. They believe that the sound came from Antarctica's Ross Sea. So they think it's from icebergs dragging along the ocean floor. But it's still strange how it literally sounds like a train whistling. All aboard the Underwater Express. Moving on to number four, we have the bloop. is probably one of the most famous ocean sounds ever recorded. In 1997, a large ultra low frequency sound was detected in the South Pacific. The sound only lasted for about a minute, but since then it was heard on a number of different occasions that summer, but has not been heard again since. Take a listen. is very powerful and extremely loud. I mean, the hydrophone that picked up the sound was more than 3,219 kilometers away, and it managed to pick that sound up. That's crazy. Researchers have said that if it did come from a mammal, it would be a mammal larger than a blue whale. So people are thinking that it was a massive sea monster releasing an air bubble or something. Not only that, but the area where the sound originated from is close to the place where H.P. Lovecraft said his fictional character Cthulhu lives. So like, what the hell? Is Cthulhu real and he made that sound or what? Moving on to number three, we have the Devil's Cauldron. The Devil's Cauldron is a geothermal location in Nevada. There's a lot of legends in the area saying that this place is extremely haunted and cursed. Well, one man decided to see what the heck was up with the Devil's Cauldron and to do some investigating of his own. So he placed an iPhone 11 in the cauldron and recorded to see what it would pick up. He managed to record what sounds like screams coming from within. He was not expecting to capture that. What makes this even scarier is how berserk the phone went after capturing these screams. As a result, some people think that this spot is the portal to the underworld or something crazy like that. Moving on to number two, we have the upsweep. This is an unidentified sound that has been detected by hydrophones since 1991. Does that not sound like it's part of a horror movie soundtrack? Like I instantly got chills listening to that. It for sure is like a warning sound that something bad is approaching. What's even freakier is that when it's sped up, it literally sounds like warning sirens. It's creepy. And like a bunch of sounds on this list, we don't know what's causing it. Theory goes that it might have to do with undersea volcanic activity, but scientists don't know for sure yet. And in our number one spot today, we have the strange humming. Dude, this next audio recording literally gave me the heebie-jeebies. So you know in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, how he goes underwater to save his friends and you hear those creepy little mermaid creature things humming? Dude, that's exactly what this sounds like. Take a listen. That's for 
sure the sound of a mermaid humming. For sure. To this day, researchers don't know what caused the sound because it's a mermaid, but they do think it's coming from some sort of organism. They just don't know which one. To this day, no known marine creature has been matched with that noise, meaning it's probably from a creature we haven't discovered yet. <clears throat> Mermaids, just saying. Kicking off the list at number 10, Titan's Ocean. Yeah, we'll start this list with an ocean signal out of this world. I mean that in a literal sense. This first one comes from Thanos' home planet, Titan. Yeah, it's one of Saturn's many moons. Saturn has 82 moons in total, so if you were a werewolf and you lived on Saturn, odds are you'd be pretty exhausted. Around 10 years ago, NASA's Cassini spacecraft detected water inside the shell of ice that is that moon. That's pretty exciting. Also, water in space anywhere is exciting, but also I'm like, mm, aliens, they're coming. To quote a Cassini team member, the search for water is an important goal in solar system exploration. And now we've spotted another place where it's abundant. Abundant, did you hear that? It's abundant, nice. We love abundant sea creatures resting on the moon Titan. NASA has detected low frequency radio waves on Saturn's icy moon, and it sounds pretty eerie. To know this is off planet entirely, if there's water involved, I don't wanna hear any space whales. I'm all set. Number nine, shifting plates. I remember this back in 2013. I hope this rings a bell for some of you watching. In 2013, a woman in British Columbia, over in Canada, heard a trumpet sound, a low, slow, like a trumpet, or so she thought. At first, nothing came from these claims or videos, just a few comments saying, that's weird, which it is. But then it started to happen in areas all over the world, from Texas to Norway, so something's going on. It's the same slow, loud trumpet sound. Well, it turns out the sound was coming from the ocean this whole time. Because again, in 2018, a little more recently, the same low-pitched humming noise was heard in Hawaii, Kenya, and then Chile. So what we're hearing all these years are shifting tectonic plates. That's our best guess at this point. Undersea volcanoes, sure, just moving some deep sea furniture around. It's gotta be loud. Some folk believe that there's another dimension underneath the ocean floor, so maybe this is just a door opening and closing. Maybe this is the bouncer being like, oh, come on in, okay. Either way, I'm good here on land, never going down there. Number eight, quacker. Quaker Oats, Quacker Oats, the quacker. Not to be confused with the Kraken, he's a little bit different. This is the quacker. A loud quack was heard during the Cold War, so a little bit older. It was recorded while Soviet Navy ballistic missile submarines were heading through North Atlantic and Arctic waters. They heard quacking, or a ribbit, something like like some sort of deep sea duck. Whenever submarines passed a certain area, this loud quack would come from deep below, and it came from an object that was moving around. That's the mysterious part. That's why we threw it on our list today. The Soviets thought they were overhearing secret US tech, you know, like I guess some deep sea duck radar. I've heard rumors of that one, that's good. That was in a James Bond movie for sure. Scientists believe that it came from a giant squid, which is somehow more alarming than the ocean floor. Number seven, underwater, underworld. Back in 2018, a diver was exploring flooded caves in Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. They were on the beach having a good time, then they saw this opening about a foot and a half wide, barely enough to fit one person, and this diver was like, eh. They went through, that's terrifying. I, first of all, bravo, hats off, that's extremely brave. But then they found this underwater tunnel that connected the Sakatoon Cave and the Dos Ojos Cave System. So this is a huge discovery. Because now, this is considered one of the largest underwater cave systems in the world. In total, it runs about 347 kilometers long. I can't even fathom how long that is underwater. This cave has been untouched since the last ice age, rightfully so. And the 200 pockets inside are filled with bones, mine altars, fossils belonging to now extinct animals, it's basically a time capsule from 15,000 years ago. So if you're diving through small cave entrances, you know, don't go alone, or you might get stuck in time, apparently. Or you might find thousands of bones or a possible entrance to the underworld. Yeah, that's also a hot rumor for this underwater mine cave system. Ah, I forgot my flippers. Can't go, sorry guys. Have fun though, sounds like a great time. Number six, Titan Ocean. This one is literally out of this world. Coming from one of the many, many moons of Saturn, Titan, around 10 years ago, NASA's Cassini spacecraft detected water underneath its massive shell of ice. That's pretty exciting. To quote a Cassini team member, the search for water is an important goal in solar system exploration. And now we've spotted another place where it's abundant. NASA has also detected low frequency radio waves on this moon before. So perhaps there's something going on under the space sea. Our own ocean is mysterious enough, let alone receiving signals from an ocean in space. No thanks, I don't wanna even think about what's up there. Number Five. 
the Kraken. Jack Sparrow's worst nightmare. Is it real? Is the Kraken actually a real thing? Where does this come from? Well, maybe. The giant squid is not that far-fetched. Some creatures in the ocean are massive as is, like for example, this manta ray off the coast of Trinidad. If the internet didn't exist and I saw this in real life, I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. So of course, many sailors reported seeing the Kraken at one point or another. The ocean's terrifying. For ages now, sailors specifically from Norway and Greenland have all continued to share eyewitness reports of a giant sea monster, the Kraken. Apparently it had tentacles big enough to pull you and your mateys right off of the ship. In 1857, Danish naturalist Japeta Steenstrup found a large squid beak, and then soon after, he was sent parts of another specimen from the Bahamas, so people were trying to help him out. So he concluded with all these gross puzzle pieces that the Kraken is real, and it's part of a species of giant squid called Archituthus dux, which is Latin for ruling squid. Very little is known about giant squid, seeing as they're so hard to track, but we did get a photo of one back in 2005, and a video of one in 2013. Number four, the whistle. If you can whistle, honestly, enjoy it. I've been trying for years, all I got is the one note. I'm like a bird. My lips are way too dry and weak, apparently. Nothing like this whistle, recorded in July 1997. This whistle was picked up by one hydrophone, meaning that scientists now can't pinpoint its location in the ocean, so we have no idea where it came from. But it was very loud, so we heard it. Somewhere in the Pacific, just, you know, somewhere out there. Good luck, just listen. That's terrifying. What do you think this is, really? The NOAA has compared the sound to volcanic activity, but because it could have come from literally anywhere, it could have been an iceberg. It could have been hydrothermal vents. It could have been the Kraken. Who knows? What do you think? Number three, the green flash. I watch way too many superhero movies, so this next one had me pacing around my living room for a hot minute. Who is this? Who is this guy? Who's this green flash man? The green flash phenomena happens in the ocean. So far, we've only observed the flash above water, but I'm sure there's some mysterious happenings going on below, you know? I'm sure there's a few confused fish over there when it happens. This happens during sunset and sunrise. Best time to see the green flash is on a clear evening over water and the air must be clean. So if you're in a polluted city, you're like, damn it. The reason we see a green flash is because of our boy, Roy G. Biv. This is the G in Roy G. Biv. Sunlight reflects off the atmosphere like a big old prism and in turn for thousands of years, human have probably been like, what was that? I just saw a green flash. I keep seeing it every night. What is going on? They're probably so confused for thousands of years. No, it's not a Justice League villain. It's just the sunset. Number two, HMS Daedalus. This 19th 19th century warship belonged to the Royal Navy. It was this big, class beauty equipped with 19 guns and it launched at Woolock Dockyard in 1844. It was a big deal. Four years later, Captain McQA, along with his officers and crew, all set sail to St. Helena, but during their commute, they were visited. Yeah, this is why we have the guns on the side of the ship. If any trouble comes along, be it pirates, whatever the case, we're now equipped. Thing is, this visitor didn't come from the sides or the front or the back, it came from below, in the form of a 60 foot long serpent. And it hung around for 20 minutes, apparently, with its head breaking the surface of the water occasionally. The captain said it was so close under the ship that if it was one of his own crew members under there, he could have easily recognized their face. That's how clear the water was. It wasn't choppy or cloudy, it was a normal day, otherwise. So do we think 60 foot long sea snakes exist? Who's to say? I mean, considering this list, I'd say yeah. We barely explored our own ocean. And finally, number one, the Milky Sea phenomenon. This one you can see from space, so we're leaving the biggest and brightest for last, folks. The Milky Sea phenomenon was first observed back in 1864 by Captain Raphael Semmes. Captain Raphael Semmes journaled it aboard his CSS Alabama. He wrote about passing from the deep blue waters into a patch of water so bright that it startled him. The whole phase of nature seemed to change, and with a little stretch of imagination, the Alabama might have been conceived to be a phantom ship lighted up by the sickly and unearthly glare of a phantom sea. That's not an exaggeration as well. This phenomena is something out of Avatar, really. It's so alien-like. Bioluminescence is part of the reason for this ghostly bright blue appearance, but sailors say there is something sinister about it as well. To this day, we don't fully understand how bioluminescence works, but it's continuing to blow our minds. For example, we just discovered a new shark. We just found a glowing shark. A glowing shark, what is happening here? The Milky Sea phenomenon is bigger than a glowy shark and it can span around 100,000 square miles. So you'll see it. If it's around, you'll probably see it. It lasts for a few nights too, so I don't blame these sailors for getting spooked out. In 2005, we got low orbit satellites to snap a pic of this phenomenon, but even so, we don't fully understand why it happens. But we're trying our best. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have this haunting call. Whales truly are some of the coolest animals on Earth, and humpback 
humpback whales are no exception. The males of the species are known for their songs which last from 10 to 20 minutes and are actually pretty complex. They will repeat these songs for hours at a time and it honestly isn't exactly known why they sing these songs at all. All the males in the group will produce the same song and it will change seasonally. The females are also able to produce noise, but for some reason it is only the males who seem to produce these long songs. It is unclear how the whales even produce these sounds however, because they don't actually have vocal cords. This is all super cool and interesting, but the whole reason you're here is for the sound, so let's take a listen to a more haunting track released by the humpback whale. Okay, so please tell me I'm not alone in thinking that that was the most beautifully haunting sound I've ever heard come from the sea. But also imagine being alone in the ocean, not knowing what that was, and then hearing it. Probably pretty terrifying, right? At least we're all safe here in YouTube land. In our number 9 spot today we have this underwater knocking. This knocking sound was picked up by an underwater hydrophone, and for a while it had people stumped until they were able to find the culprit. Before we talk about what this sound is coming from, imagine being in the deep, dark, icy waters and hearing that sound. It is straight up out of a horror movie, but as it turns out, the real source isn't quite as scary. This is actually the sound of a species of haddock fish. These types of haddock are a ray finned fish that can be found in the North Atlantic Ocean. The males of the species will produce this drumming or pulsating sound in order to attract mates during the mating season. Outside of the mating season, a similar sound is also produced, and that is known to be used during a aggressive encounters with other male fish. In our number 8 spot today we have the 52 Hertz whale. This whale has been nicknamed the loneliest whale in the world, but the truth is, we don't even really know if that's true because we've never actually seen it. This whale, which we don't know if it's male or female or what whale species it belongs to, sings its song like no other whale does. This whale was first heard in 1989 on a hydrophone, and while the calls were most similar to that of a blue whale, there was one striking difference and that was the the frequency of the calls. This whale calls at 52 hertz, with regular blue whales calling between 10 and 40 hertz. Even fin whales are usually heard at 20 hertz, so it left everyone stumped as to what could be going on here. A researcher named Bill Watkins dedicated his life to trying to reveal what exactly was going on here, and while he passed away in 2004, he found that this whale was not only unusual, but totally unique. The biggest challenge is the fact that we cannot locate this whale. Their calls can be heard for hundreds of miles and trying to find one single whale in the vastness of the ocean is next to impossible. Many people have suggested that perhaps the whale is deaf, and this is what has led to its unique song, but of course without the whale, how would we possibly know for sure? In our number 7 spot today we have Slow Down. Slow Down is another sound that was captured in 1997, but this one was captured on May 19th of that year. The 90s was apparently the height of the capturing weird unexplained ocean sounds wave because wow, there are so many. This sound got its name because of the fact that the sound descends in frequency over about 7 minutes. Again, this is another sound I would have just assumed was ghosts, but luckily there are people out there who know more than me who continue to research these things and try to get to the bottom of these mysteries. This sound was so loud it was detected by different sensors nearly 5,000 kilometers apart from each other. Scientists were able to locate the sound as coming from somewhere off the Antarctic Peninsula. While they couldn't directly find the source of the sound, they used their deductive reasoning and it is currently believed that the sound might have been the result of a drifting iceberg as it scratched the sea floor until it slowly came to a stop. I guess the icebergs were just moving around a lot in the mid to late 90s. In our number 6 spot today we have the sigh whale. Here we are again with another whale sound that just truly doesn't seem like it should be the sound coming out of any living creature, but hey, in the sea the rules are just different and everything's a little weirder. These whales can be found in subtropical, temperate and subpolar waters around the world. They are sadly a species that has seen their numbers decrease rapidly, especially due to the historical commercial whaling that took place in the 19th and 20th centuries. The exact number of these whales that currently exist is unknown, but they are a species that is currently listed as being threatened. Like many other whales, these guys use their voice to communicate with one another, and that is where this sound comes from.
Other than the sound that they're making, the increase in noise under the water, especially man made noise, is actually a threat to their existence. The sound can interrupt their normal behavior and drive them away from areas that are important to their survival. And sometimes intense exposure to noise can even cause one of these whales to strand and die, which truly is just awful. In our number five spot today, we have Star Wars. Okay, you might be wondering why something relating to Star Wars is on this list since we are talking about the sea, but just listen to the sound and then tell me what you think. That sounds kind of like little fighter jets or something, right? Well, it definitely had some people stumped for a while when it was first heard, but luckily this one has a fairly simple and harmless explanation. The Star Wars sound is actually coming from dwarf mink whales. Apparently, a lot of strange ocean noises end up either being attributed to whales or icebergs. Considering how creepy this sound can be when they have no explanation, I'm kind of glad to know that most things end up being relatively harmless and way less scary in reality. In our Number four spot today, we have the Atlantic Cod. Atlantic Cod are known for their ability to produce clicks, growls, and thumps as their way of communicating. The clicks I'm about to show you are apparently intended to ward off potential predators, including humans, and I truly feel like it might be working. While this sound was recorded on a hydrophone, it's been said that divers who have encountered these fish in the ocean have also been able to hear these warning clicks so as to let them know not to get close. These fish also of course have different less aggressive sounds as well that they use for things like mating season or to be able to warn others of their kind of potential dangers that are lurking in the icy waters. In our number 3 spot today we have the ping. This is a sound that no one has been able to figure out where it is coming from. I'll admit this one wasn't captured by a submarine, but I had to include it because it is coming from the water and it is so mysterious that scientists and even the military still aren't sure what exactly is going on here. This sound can be heard in the Kikitalik region of the Canadian territory Nunavut and is coming from the Fury and Hecla Strait. This sound has been described by some as a ping and by others as a hum, but the main issue is that this area is a hunting area and whatever the sound is, it is scaring off all of the wildlife. Because of the reports of this mysterious sound, even the military came to investigate, but still, no one is exactly sure where this sound could have been coming from or what it could be linked to. For now, the mysteries that lay below the Arctic ice are destined to remain a secret. In our number two spot today, we have hmm. This sound is one that was captured on a hydrophone, and it truly sounds like someone just trying to add some infliction to their voice to ask a question. I'll give you one second to take a guess first. Did you guess another whale? Well, you'd be right then. This sound is coming from the North Atlantic right whale and is not just the sound of a super confused person. These whales are one of the world's endangered large whale species with there being only 400 left in the Atlantic Ocean. The sound you just heard is the sound they use to communicate with others of their species. Their sounds are usually low frequency moans or groans and they are used to indicate things like warnings, contact, aggression, or just other social signals in general. In our number one spot today we have boom. Okay, maybe the last one was a little too easy so here's another sound that I'm gonna let you guess and maybe it will be a little harder this time. Do you have a guess as to what that big boom was? Apparently that sound was caught on a hydrophone and it is coming from an underwater oil rig. Remember when we were talking about the man made sound pollution of the deep sea and how it affects the marine life? This is exactly the kind of thing we were talking about. I don't have the solution on how to make it better or how to fix the problem. All I know is that it is one and honestly how could it not be? That sound freaked me out while I was sitting comfortably at my desk researching so I can imagine hearing it when I wasn't expecting it in the comfort of my own home, that just sounds awful. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the train. The train is a sound that was first recorded on March 5th, 1997. It is often referred to as the train because, well, it kind of sounds like a train's whistle or maybe like the sound of the wheels grinding against the tracks. But in my opinion, it just sounds like a ghost meetup. Despite the 
years it's been since this sound was captured, no one is entirely sure where it came from. The current belief is that it may have been from an extremely large iceberg in the Ross Sea near Cape Adair, but that is still only a guess. The steady hum might be the sound of the keel of an iceberg dragging across the sea floor. But what if it's not? Number 9. Submarine Propeller when it comes to creepy sounds or signals heard from the ocean, here or out there, it really depends on who you ask if it's creepy or not. A submarine propeller firing up underwater to many is nothing. Just another day working on the Navy, if anything. But this guy with submechanophobia, the fear of big things underwater, the sound of a submarine propeller firing up is absolutely haunting. My palms are literally sweating just reading this. The noise of the propeller is traceable, but the sonar, that can mess up some whales. Sonar underwater is so loud you can feel it through your entire body. It's definitely not something you want to witness up close. It's like standing near the speaker at a club. Your bones just feel it. Take a listen. Take a listen. Also, a little headphone warning. It's kind of, it's exactly what you expect. Number 8. Slow Down Not to be confused with Slow Ride, that's an absolute banger from the 70s, Slow Down was recorded on May 19th, 1997, so a little bit later. It was picked up in the equatorial Pacific Ocean, just in the middle of literally nowhere. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration picked it up not once, but several times every year. Our best guess as to what this sound is, perhaps it's moving ice in Antarctica. But the fascinating part here is that this sound decreases in frequency over time. It takes about 7 minutes in total, so we can't include the entire clip or else you'd be pretty bored. But here's the clip 16 times as fast. Scientists believe the sound is a massive iceberg scratching against the ocean floor over of course 7 minutes and then after 7 minutes it came to a, a halt. But the fact that we hear this sound every year, that's the concerning part. We're like why is it, is it coming out and then halting again? Cthulhu, is that you or is it a lot of ice melting? Most likely the latter, but who knows. Number 7. Whistle. If you can whistle, honestly, hats off to you. I've been trying for years. My lips are too dry and too weak. I have weak lips, apparently. The whistle recorded in July 1997 is not weak, and as this list hint towards, it's certainly not dry. The thing with this mysterious sound is that it was only picked up by one hydrophone, meaning scientists can't pinpoint its location, making this an unexplained sound. It came from somewhere in the Pacific Ocean, so sleep with that in your head. Somewhere. How calming is that? Here's the unidentified sound. What do you think this is? The National Oceanic and the, sorry, the NOAA rather, has compared the sound to some volcanic activity heard in the Mariana Volcanic Arc. But again, we can't pinpoint it at all, so we have no idea. We need three hydrophones to do so. This one was only heard in one. Number six, upsweep. Unidentified yet again. Love to hear it. Literally. Sound travels much faster underwater than it does in air, more than four times as fast. So when we hear these noises, one, they're incredibly loud, which is the most impressive part in my opinion, but because sound travels so quickly, it's hard to find out where these calls are coming from. Upsweep is an unidentified sound that was heard throughout the entire Pacific Ocean. When the Pacific Marine Environmental Laboratory fired up its sound surveillance system back in August 1991, these sounds were heard. See, unlike the sounds we've covered so far, this one happens in real time. It's not sped up because it's 17 minutes long, it's just, that's it, that's what it sounded like. These upsweeping sounds lasting a few seconds each ping is definitely concerning. The source was roughly located around New Zealand and South America, somewhere around those places, and it peaks around autumn and spring. So maybe it's just a monster tucking itself in for the winter, and then maybe it's waking back up in spring. Who knows? Scientists at the NOAA have a better idea so far. A little boring, but they believe it's underwater volcanic activity. I say boring, it's not really boring, it's just predictable, I guess. This sound has been getting lower pitched every year, so who knows? Maybe that's a bad thing, maybe it's a good thing. Maybe this thing's gonna go off. Maybe it's gonna go off tomorrow. That was 30 years ago, so any day. Number five, Julia. Who is she? Who is this Julia chick we've been talking about? Julia sounds like a rather friendly addition to this list, but don't let her name fool you. Julia is... Terrifying, definitely, yeah. 
Back in March 1999, this noise here was recorded again by the NOAA, and this time the noise was heard across the entire Pacific Ocean hydrophone array. So across all that distance, we heard Julia. So whatever made this noise, be it an iceberg, volcanic activity, giant fish from Legend of Zelda, it's got power behind those vocals, you know? She's loud. The point of its origin is determined to be somewhere around Bransfield Straits and Cape Adair. This Cape Adair gets a lot of action in the world, sound-wise and bloop-wise, and we think it's because of icebergs, but maybe the Kraken's name is just Julia. Maybe this is her just slowly introducing herself to the world. Again, it's a long clip in real time, but sped up, sounds like somebody's humming underwater. It's terrifying. Take a listen. This one creeps me out a lot, a lot. I think I've heard the hum before. I don't know. Maybe it was Kid Cudi in the distance. Maybe it was this hum. Either way, I'm on board. The hum has been heard for decades now. We have no idea where the hum is coming from. Our best guess is that it has something to do with, of course, as the title hints, the ocean. A resident from Woodland, England spoke out on their experience saying, it vibrates through the house. We've turned all the electricity off in the house and we can still hear it, so it's not that. It's not tinnitus, that's a high pitched sound and this is very low. If I put my fingers in my ears, it stops, so I know it's not in my head. It's heard commonly in Hawaii, Britain, North America, so it's, hey, everywhere. It's been heard everywhere, I guess. Some have called it the Windsor hum, which is insanely close to us, hence why I think I've heard it in real life. I put the microphone to you now, people, the fine people of YouTube. Have you heard the hum? If so, where were you? Comment down below. Number three, 2021 boom. A little bit more recent for this one. Back in early 2021, San Diego residents reacted to what sounded like a sonic boom. Well, it's been heard three times since the initial report. And many still have questions. I have questions. Now you have questions. Windows were shaking, doors were rattling, all of San Diego heard and felt this thing. But what was it? An earthquake? Being in San Diego and all residents are used to earthquakes, but this was entirely different. Everyone felt something new here. Also, it helps to know that no earthquakes were reported at this time, so that theory is just out of the way. And the Marines didn't take responsibility for it as well. And if it was a sonic boom from a plane, well, that would be pretty obvious. We'd kind of have an idea. We'd have a few ideas if it was a plane ripping overhead. Plus, they're not allowed to do that kind of stuff that close to the coast. December 28th, 2021, residents were posting their thoughts on Twitter. One user tweeted, San Diego it was cool because I'm like, oh wow, just felt an earthquake, but not actually, it was a sonic boom. Well, keep an ear out for any more mysterious sonic booms coming from the ocean in 2022. The last one wasn't long ago at all. If you live in San Diego, drop us a comment, help us understand what's going on. Number two, the train. This sound was given its name because, well, it sounds like a passing train in the distance. Simple as that, sometimes it's not, you know, scientific. It was first recorded on March 5th, 1997, and it sounds, honestly, it sounds like my PS4. It sounds really loud, it sounds like a really loud, really hot fan that's gonna just, just lift up and take off in the middle of playing Warzone. I'm like, hi, no, come back. Here's the clip. The leading theory as to what's making the sound is not a surprising one. Large icebergs grounding near Ross Sea and Cape Adair. Again, that's probably the most plausible explanation here. Friendly reminder that more than 80% of the ocean is undiscovered, so my only question is, what if it's not? Number one, 52 hertz whale. I love whales because they're the closest thing to a dinosaur, in my opinion. They're massive, we have no idea how they mate, that's still a mystery, we mentioned that in another list. They're beautiful, complex creatures that we should just leave alone. Probably, definitely. Especially the 52 Hertz whale. Well, maybe not too alone, because there's a documentary about this sound. Joshua Zeman made a documentary about the loneliest whale on the planet. Sounds pretty depressing, but it's equally as interesting. For decades now, we've heard this sound. Back in 1989, the US Navy first detected this sound that measured in at more than twice the frequency of a normal, healthy whale call. So this thing's loud. Originally, what got them intrigued was the fact that this could have been a military mechanical sound, of course. But then they thought, well, maybe it's an animal. Perhaps this is like a new Cthulhu hybrid dinosaur thing that someone's working on. This is a lonely whale, but why is its frequency scaring away possible friends and mates? Kicking off the list at number 10, the upsweep. Remember last July when the ocean was on fire in the Gulf of Mexico due to a gas leak and we all watched like What's going on? What is this? Why is there a hole to hell? Just all of a sudden it appeared. Well, five hours later, the company resumed pumping gas again. So sometimes when the ocean screams at us, we have to listen. Even if we're not exactly sure what it is we're hearing. Sound travels much faster underwater than it does in air. More than four times as fast. You ever crack your knuckles underwater? Try it when you get a chance. Sounds like a war zone underneath there. See, because sound travels so quickly, it's hard to find out where the signals or events are happening in the deep sea. The upsweep is an unidentified sound that was heard throughout the entire Pacific. 
Pacific Ocean. Again, quite loud. When the Pacific Marine Environmental Laboratory fired up its sound surveillance system back in 1991, these sounds were heard. This sound happens in real time as well. It's not sped up or altered in any way. These upsweeping sounds last a few seconds each ping. The source was roughly located around New Zealand and South America, and it peaks around autumn and spring. So whatever it is, well, it's probably hibernating. So one, folks, here we go. The Challenger Deep is the deepest known point on Earth's seabed. My ears were popping just looking at this. The Challenger Deep is of course located on the south side of the Marianas Trench in the Pacific Ocean. You may not witness this depression up close at any point in your life, but thanks to the internet, you can hear it. Yeah, there we go. Scientists recorded around 23 days of material on the ocean floor, and it's not just bubbles and or trouble. Only four manned missions have gone this deep. The last one was in 2012, so it's pretty rare to have any information down there at all. The results were pretty surprising, being as deep as they were. The sounds were haunting, to say the least. Oceanographer Robert Ziak was leading this project, and many of these sounds recorded were those from the surface. Sound travels quite a ways. To quote Ziak, the ambient sound field is dominated by the sound of earthquakes, both near and far, as well as distinct moans of baleen whales and the clamor of a Category 4 typhoon that just happened to pass overhead. Yeah, all of that hitting you at the same time. You're like, next. Number eight, a big boom. Turning the calendar back to May 2010 in Pennsylvania, residents were enjoying their day when you guessed it, a loud boom, or a big boom rather, historically correct, shook residents. It shook residents figuratively and literally. Resident Kim Owen reported to the Sun Gazette news outlet that at first she didn't think much about it. That's until a friend of hers who lives only a few blocks away posted on Facebook about the incident. The post was reaching out to others in the community asking if they too heard this big boom. So far the leading theory, believe it or not, is meteorites crashing into the earth. The more plausible scenario is that these booms may be caused by high pressure gases being released from the earth's surface. Even our own planet needs to release the beast sometimes. Taco Tuesdays ain't a joke. I get it, we've all been there. Number seven, Mist Poofers. There's a fun name, Mist Poofers. Sounds like a royal way of farting. Excuse me while I Mist Poofer. Mm -mm. It's not a royal toot, sadly, it's actually much worse. Mist Poofers are a series of loud booms heard near the waters all over the Netherlands. It's been reported as this loud crack, like thunder or a large canyon splitting in half. The might of Thor just being unleashed in the Netherlands, perhaps? Is Odin back? It sounds like he's back. I don't know, should we go check it out? It's often heard in the Bay of Fundy up here in Canada, but reports have come in as far as Japan, Ireland, really all around the world. Have you ever heard a mist poofer? Are the oceans cracking open? Or has Voldemort returned and now he sent his army of mist poofers? Are we doomed? We're doomed. Number six, quacker. When I first read about this, I thought it said Quaker, like the ground was perhaps splitting open like an earthquake. That would fit in with this list so far, right? Mother Nature sending loud signals that she's about to break open and blow to smithereens. Sounds okay, makes sense. The Quacker, not Quaker, the Quacker was heard during the Cold War. While Soviet Navy ballistic missile submarines were heading through North Atlantic and Arctic waters, they heard quacking, almost like a rivet. Whenever a submarine passed a certain area, this loud quack would come from deep below. It came from an object that was moving around. So, that's scary. The Soviets thought that they overheard secret US tech down below. Uh, yes, the deep sea duck. I've heard rumors, let's go check it out. Scientists currently believe it came from a giant squid. That's somehow more alarming than the ocean floor cracking open to me. I don't know why. Is that alarming? That feels alarming. Kraken, is that you? Number five, hidden ocean heat. If you put your ear up to a seashell, if you listen closely, apparently you can hear global warming. Yeah, I'm not kidding, how depressing is this one? Back in 1991, scientists lowered these massive speakers, like these nightclub subwoofers, into the waters at Heard Island. Really? Okay, I see what you guys did there. These speakers emitted low frequency sounds all across our oceans. These signals were later picked up by receivers near California and Bermuda. And these signals contained information on the temperatures of our oceans. Our oceans absorb more than 90% of energy left over from global warming. There were a few scientists who at the time were also concerned about how these low frequency sounds may be affecting ocean life. Yeah, what does that sound like to a beluga whale? Mm, not great, I assume. Number four, snapping shrimp. If you hear this in the ocean, you're not gonna have a great time, my friend. I have to include the sounds from a snapping shrimp because for its size, it creates a sonic boom. It's extremely impressive. Oh. Oh. 
That really hurt. They're often found in coral reefs, oyster reefs, and these little guys, these pistol shrimp, they hit their prey at 100 kilometers an hour. In doing so, a large air bubble is created, and because this Mike Tyson shrimp is so quick with the jabs, the following pop is around 200 decibels. The sound alone stuns their prey, or if they're lucky, for both parties, it sometimes can kill them. The sound resembles dry burning twigs, almost like it's crackling, almost like you're cracking your knuckles underwater. So you'd be sitting there enjoying a drink in the sand, and all of a sudden, those are five shrimp hitting you at the same time. Number three, clownfish. This is the last fish entry on our list, I swear. Then we'll get back to some more creepy bleeps and or bloops. Honestly, this is so interesting, I could not include it. If the movie Finding Nemo was scientifically accurate, Nemo and his father would sound a lot different. It would be a horror film, realistically. Cloudfish sounds are all but a joke. In order to obtain dominance, these fish make aggressive popping noises at one another, <laughs> which is so funny because they're so cute. Their jaws open and close at high speeds. They basically beatbox if there's an intruder or if there's a possible mate. Don't get clowned by a clownfish, keep your ears open. Number two, shifting plates. Ah, back into the big, we're doomed stuff. This one I actually remember hearing for myself, believe it or not. Either that or my neighbor let out the most amazing fart. Back in 2013, a woman in British Columbia began to hear a loud sound that resembled a trumpet, like the slow, loud, ominous trumpet from afar. Quickly, people began to question just how real the video was because there weren't any explanations right off the bat. Or at least there weren't any explanations that made sense. Reports of the same began all over the world, from Texas to Norway. What was this thing? The sounds differ just slightly, and no one's been able to figure out just what these sounds are or where they're coming from. One professor from the University of Saskatchewan, another concerned Canadian, believes that these noises are electromagnetic waves coming from the northern lights. Ah uh, yes, the beautiful northern lights. It's pretty loud, huh? I'm like, what? I didn't know this at all. Northern lights are loud. The apocalypse sure is beautiful. And finally, number one, the buzzer. No, I'm not talking about Kawhi Leonard when he, you know, we're still thinking about it. That's, that's a good one. This one legit gives me goosebumps. That's why I'm gonna end the video off. We're jumping out of the sea for this one, so lose those goggles. In the 1980s, when a radio tower just north of Moscow began transmitting these random and creepy sounding beeps and bloops, come 1992, these sounds began to change. That year, it suddenly switched to a buzzing sound, short and sweet, around 25 times a minute. These strange routines would be interrupted once every few weeks by a male voice, which would then be reciting a string of numbers and words, like he was trying to reset the winter soldier or something like that. And to make things more creepy here, in June of 2010, and also in August of the same year, the station briefly stopped sending out signals altogether. Maybe they ran out of battery, I don't know, maybe they needed a lozenge break, some lemon tea, all that talking that entire time, that's gotta damage the vocals. At the end of August in 2010, the station again changed and there began to be different shuffling sounds and thuds that can now be heard in the background. And often these little snippets of the dance of little swans from Swan Lake would also be interrupted into the broadcast. Yeah, if any secret agents are listening to this, I want in. Whatever operation this is going on in the ocean in a submarine, send me Swan Lake Mission Impossible briefings. Knock twice, I'll do a pirouette, let's do it. A pirouette kicks a bad guy's head off, easy. Starting off this countdown, we have the sea monster. What you just heard is a noise no one knows much about. Seriously, researchers don't know what it's from. I don't know about you, but it sounded like a deep growl. For sure, that is the sound from some massive sea monster. It literally sounds like some evil creature cackling away or something like that. All I know is that I don't like the sound of that and I never want to encounter this creature. Now, because of the power and loudness of the sound, it can be assumed that whatever is making that sound is quite massive. today we have this marine chorus. Okay, so out of context, if I played you this sound, what would you think it is? Definitely not something underwater, right? Well, as it turns out, this sound was indeed captured under the water, and these are the sounds of fish calls. While I always expected the chorus of marine animals to sound a little more similar to the stylings of Sebastian the Crab, apparently that isn't even close. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't even know that most fish had calls, but it turns out that our human ears just can't perceive all of the hoots, moans, barks, and chirps that take place in the vast seas. This recording actually helped scientists realize that there are fish who sing 
sing together in a chorus every day at dusk and dawn. There have now been around 800 species of fish that have been identified and confirmed to make some form of noise, and apparently some fish even engage in shouting matches in noisier parts of the ocean, which is kind of hilarious to imagine. I guess on the list of creepy noises, this one is less creepy and more just informative. In our number 8 spot today we have the whistle. This is a sound that was first recorded in 1997 by the NOAA and was the source of many mysteries for years while people speculated about what may have caused the sound. While it still isn't exactly clear, it is now believed that the sound may have come from an underwater volcano eruption. If you didn't know, underwater or submarine volcanoes are located in all oceans on our earth and they're extremely interesting. There are certain kinds of marine animals that only exist near these extreme environments. Many submarine volcanoes are located near the areas of tectonic plate formations, which are also known as mid-ocean ridges. There is a YouTube user called Some Canadian, and they left a comment on a video of this whistle sound that pretty much sums it up exactly. First, we'll listen to the sound played at 10 times the original speed. The comment read, quote, It could be the sound of something moving through tunnels. One, volcanic eruptions and gases. Two, something big and hungry. You choose. I think they might really be onto something there. In our number seven spot today, we have Bloop. Why are all of the weirdest ocean sounds first recorded in 1997? Bloop is another one that came from that year, and it was a loud and unusual sound that was placed as occurring several times off the southern coast of South America, and it was so loud that it could be heard over 5,000 kilometers away. At first, researchers were confused because while the sound was actually similar to known sounds of living creatures, it was just way too loud that not even the blue whale, the largest living creature, could have produced it. So what is it then? Well, as it turns out, it is in fact not the kraken, and instead it is actually consistent with ice quakes that are generated by large icebergs as they crack and fracture. It seems like this sound going with that explanation doesn't really make sense, but hey, I'm no scientist. But here's the sound for you to judge for yourself. In our number 6 spot today, we have the Western Pacific Bio Twang. In 2014, researchers and scientists heard weird sounds coming from the Mariana Trench, which, for the record, seems like the worst place for there to be strange noises coming from. For years, experts couldn't pin down this sound, and it was dubbed the Western Pacific Bio Twang, and while there is now a theory that was proposed by researchers from Oregon State University, they have also said that they might be entirely wrong. First, for reference, here's a little clip of the sound I'm talking about. Okay, so if you're like me, my mind immediately went to something alien related or some sort of creature that perhaps we haven't yet discovered. I mean, this is the Mariana Trench we're talking about. The theory put forward by the Oregon State researchers was that perhaps this may be a new type of baleen whale call. Okay, that's probably the best of all of the options, but I really don't like when someone tells me the answer to a scientific mystery only to tell me that that might not actually be the answer at all. While the low part of the sound would make sense to attribute to the baleen whale, it's the end high-pitched twangy part that would be incredibly unique. The wide range of frequencies in the sound are what continues to baffle those who are trying to find the source of this mysterious sound. In our number 5 spot today we have Julia. Julia is a sound that was recorded in 1999 by the US National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, which I've already talked about today. It sounds like it could be straight out of a horror movie, so considering it was a sound that came from our ocean and at first no one could tell where it had come from. It it really was quite frightening. The sound has now likely been demystified as researchers are pretty positive they know the origin of it. It is now believed that this sound was caused by an iceberg running aground off Antarctica. The sound, however, was insanely loud. It was so loud that it could be heard over the entire Equatorial Pacific Ocean Autonomous Hydrophone Array. Researchers were later able to narrow down what they believe may have been the point where the sound originated, although they've never actually been able to pinpoint it exactly. Most of the time when people hear the Julia sound, they hear it sped up at 16 times the original speed, but today we are going to listen to a clip of the sound at regular speed because I think it is much more eerie this way.
In our number four spot today, we have Knock. Okay, this is one that I'll admit was not captured by a submarine, but it was still underwater and it truly is terrifying. A few years ago, a beluga whale named Nock, who was unfortunately in captivity, was recorded as he swam below the water. Beluga whales have been called the canaries of the sea, and for good reason, but Nock really wanted to up the ante and instead blessed us all with this sound. <laughs> Nock had this uncanny ability to mimic the rhythm and tone of human voices, and it truly is kind of frightening. It of course is also a little sad, as part of this was probably because he spent most of his life being forced to listen to humans speak because he was being held in captivity. Before this recording of Nock, the voices of belugas and their sometimes human-like sounds have been talked about, but Nock was the first time it was recorded, and honestly, I kind of wish it hadn't been. In our number three spot today, we have the bio duck. Since the 1960s, this sound has absolutely stumped researchers who heard it. This sound was basically what the name attributed to it would suggest. It sounded like some sort of mechanical duck. For decades, researchers would hear this sound and it would often be heard and recorded again in the spring and winters. After all of these years though, it seems as though the answers to this mysterious sound are finally coming to light. In 2013, researchers attached sensors that collect acoustic data to two whales. One of those tags recorded for 18 hours and the other for 8, and the whales they were attached to were traveling with other whales in groups of 5 to 40, and they were all eating basically the entire time. Throughout this time, with the tags on the whales, there were a total of 32 calls heard, and this data is what led researchers to finally understand where the bio duck sound was coming from. As it turns out, this mysterious sound was actually the call of the mink whale. Researchers still aren't exactly clear as to what the call means to the whales, but it was a fantastic discovery that finally closed an almost 50 year old scientific mystery. In our number two spot today, we have Upsweep. We all know how little we know about the ocean, and that also includes what kind of creatures lie in it. So while this mysterious sound out of context probably wouldn't be that freaky, when put into this situation, it becomes quite a bit more eerie. This sound is referred to as Upsweep and it was caught when the Pacific Marine Environmental Laboratory started its sound surveillance system in August of 1991. The sound is apparently more seasonal, with its peaks in spring and fall, but it is unclear if the changing of seasons is responsible for this sound, or if it's coming from something that lurks in the ocean and remains undiscovered. Just for reference, here's a clip of that sound, played at 20 times the original speed. It is possible that this sound could be coming from underwater volcanic activity, but it is also possible that it's not, so who really knows? In our number one spot today, we have an earthquake. Okay, so to add another creepy Mariana Trench sound to this list, we have one that was taken from the bottom of the Challenger Deep. In fact, it was the first ever sound recording to be taken from the bottom of the Challenger Deep, so it's a pretty cool scientific advancement, as well as a terrifying sound. Despite the crushing pressures and the fact that there's no sunlight, the Challenger Deep is actually pretty pretty noisy, and that is because of the fact that sound travels a really long way underwater, which ends up kind of turning the Challenger Deep into a sort of echo chamber of oceanic sounds. So while the recording was able to pick up things like the sound of a boat almost 11 kilometers overhead and the sounds of whale calls, they were also able to pick up the sound of a magnitude 5 earthquake rumbling near Guam on July 16th, 2015. gonna lie, while being one of the scariest things I've ever heard, this is also one of the coolest things I've ever heard in my life too. Science really is just so cool sometimes. Mm -hmm. 